Hi everyone! Thanks for watching Lori Wired. So in this video, we're going to talk about one of the fundamental aspects of Android reverse engineering. So what I'm talking about is selecting an Android emulator in order to perform dynamic analysis of your Android APK. So when you first start out and you're trying to decide how to run an Android emulator and which emulator to choose, you might realize that there are some system requirements that you need to take into consideration, as well as just a lot of different Android emulator options out there, so you might not really be sure which ones to choose. So I'm going to go over a few different options that you have for different Android emulators, talk about some of their pros and cons, uh, talk about the different system requirements that you'll need for running different Android emulators, and then I'm going to give you an example of a regular workflow that might work well for you in your analysis. So first things first, let's talk about your system requirements. You're going to want to have about at least 8 gigs of RAM in order to run your Android emulator smoother. You can get away with a little bit less, but you might experience some delays and interrupts in your analysis. So having at least 8 gigs or more is always going to be preferable for running your Android emulator. Now you're also going to want to have at least 16 gigs of disk space in order to store like the Android SDK or the software component that's holding your emulator. Some of the options you can have less space, but just to make your life easier, give yourself at least 16 gigs of disk space. So one of the most important things next is going to be enabling virtualization in your BIOS. If your machine does not support virtualization on the host, then the guest is not going to be able to run in the host. In this case, the host would be the machine that's running the emulator, and the guest is going to be the Android emulator itself. If you don't enable virtualization, then the emulator is not going to actually be able to start up and you will not be able to perform any dynamic analysis. So make sure you check your system and make sure it supports virtualization. So now let's go over the different operating systems that you can use to run your Android emulator. Of course, Linux is always going to be preferable because if you remember, Android is really just Linux under the hood. So if you're going from a Linux operating system to an Android shell, then you're going to be able to stay in the same kind of OS flavor and use the same commands. Additionally, there are certain tools such as the Medusa framework that will only run on Linux. So you're going to have the best compatibility options if you can run on a Linux host. Now, if you're using Windows or Mac, don't worry, I'm using Windows right now, as you can see. So you can use these different operating systems as well in your analysis. So there are many different options that I will get into in the later part of this video. So now let's get into something called the instruction set architecture. Now, if you're running on a machine, you're generally going to be running on an x86 based machine. So what this means is that the processor hardware that your computer is running is only designed to run a certain kind of instructions. So if you're trying to run an architecture that has a processor that's designed for a different kind of instructions, it's going to have to actually emulate the entire processor and it's not going to run very well. So you're going to experience crazy delays. So you have to keep this in mind when you're trying to decide on an emulator to run. So the different processor architectures or instruction set architectures that Android is designed for are x86, which is going to be the 32-bit version, x86-64 or simply x64, which is going to be the 64-bit version of x86, ARM, the 32-bit version, as well as ARM64, which is the 64-bit version of ARM. So there are also going to be many different versions in between, but these are the primary processor architectures that you need to consider when you're trying to run your Android emulator. So why is this important? Well, most Android devices are going to be running a kind of ARM. So this is best for limited battery, CPU, memory that Android devices have. So when an APK is compiled for a particular processor architecture, it's likely going to be a 32 or 64-bit version of ARM. 
Now, this is a problem for us because if we're running on an x86 based machine, then we're not going to be able to emulate an ARM machine very well. Actually, the performance will be so bad that don't even try, just give up. Let yourself run an x86 based emulator on an x86 based machine and an ARM based emulator on an ARM machine. One thing to note though, is that if you're running x64, you will be backwards compatible to x86. And if you're running a 64-bit version of ARM, you're going to also be compatible with previous versions of ARM. So for example, if you're running ARM v8, then you'll also be able to support ARM v7. However, if you're running an ARM v7 machine, you're not going to be able to run an ARM v8 emulator. So this gets kind of complicated, but this is what you have to consider when you're trying to run an Android emulator for a particular platform. So you might be asking, well, how do I know when I want to choose which kind of emulator and how can I support all the different kinds of instruction set architectures that Android supports? Well, you're going to want to check and see if the Android application has any native code. So this is going to be any shared object binaries inside of the APK. If it does, then there's usually going to be a folder named something like ARM v7 or x86 for each different architecture it supports. And then you can just decide from there which emulator what you want to choose based off of the supported architectures of the APK. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the different options that you have for running Android emulators. So the first option would be Android Studio, which has the Android SDK installed by default if you go and install Android Studio on your host platform. Now, a couple pros and cons for this. This gives you many different emulator options. So depending on what your host is, it gives you x86 based options as well as ARM based options and probably has the most different Android emulator choices available out of all the different options that I'm going to go over today. But cons, this has a lot of dependencies and it takes kind of a long time to install. So it's got a lot of overhead as well because you're installing the entirety of Android Studio and you need to run it the first time. So this is kind of going to have a lot of overhead. So if you want to go quickly and not have a lot of dependencies, this isn't going to be the option for you. But in general, if you're running on hardware on your host machine, then you'll be totally fine running this because you'll have hardware acceleration. This will have a very hard time running inside of a virtual machine, and if you're on Windows, just give up. If you're on Linux, yeah, you can get away with it if you're inside of a VM, but this is really best for a running on the hardware itself, on the host. So if you're running this and it has the Android SDK installed, it actually is installed at a particular Android path. So if you don't want to run the entirety of Android Studio, you can go ahead and go to that path in your console and run, for example, the Android emulator binary yourself so that you have less overhead when you're running this. So for the next option, this is actually kind of a less used option, but I really like this one. This is going to be running your Android emulator inside of a Docker container. So Docker containers, they're just going to let you quickly create and destroy different kind of isolated containers. And these are going to have all of the different components already bundled inside of the container. So you actually don't have to install any other dependencies besides Docker itself. So somebody can pre-install all of the different required components inside of this Docker container, and you can just go ahead and run as many emulators as you want in these containers and destroy them as you go. So this is the first option that you have. This is good for x86 Android emulators. I like this one because it runs really well on Windows and you don't have to install any other screen copy software on your host. All you need to do is go to the different port that's opened up on the container inside of a browser on your host and you can just interface with the Android emulator very easily like that con for this, it is only for x86 devices. Next option, if we're talking about Docker containers, 
this is going to be RE Droid, and this will work for ARM64 Android emulators. And the nice thing about this is it runs really well on Mac and Linux. So if you're running either of those and you're on ARM, then this is definitely the container that I would recommend. Uh, one con, you still do need to install screen copy on your host, but it's really easy and all you need to do is download the binary and run that and it just runs through ADB and you can still connect to the device really well. So this is just going to be for ARM64 support and it's not going to really run easily on Windows, so if you're on Windows I recommend using the other container. Uh, final option for Docker. There are a lot of different options available on Docker Hub if you check. They are pre-compiled containers that have the different versions of the Android SDK already installed inside of them. Con for this one is you do actually need to run different commands inside of your container. So you'll have to type all of these, create the device, through the Android SDK um, and do all of that in order to actually run the Android emulator rather than the previous two options, which will just go ahead and run the emulator automatically for you. One previous note to get into, the difference between using some of these tools and using just the Android SDK through Android Studio is that Android Studio gives you kind of the nicest GUI graphical user experience. So if you're brand new to this and you're running on hardware, then go ahead and use Android Studio because it's the easiest to use and the easiest to get started with. So let's get back into our next options. So next, Android x86 is an open source project and they have a lot of different versions of Android x86 operating systems available for you to download. Pro to this, if, for example, you are stuck running on a Windows VM, then this might be one of your only options because it actually runs inside of a hypervisor. So if you have, for example, Hyper-V or VMware installed on your system, you can download the ISO from this Android x86 open source project, and you can install that operating system, uh, install the full emulator just like you would any other operating system through your hypervisor of choice. That also, uh, that also enables the really convenient checkpoints and everything you need if you're trying to save different states of the device. So that can be really helpful, actually. So one major con about this Android x86 process project is that you're going to have to install the entire operating system from scratch and partition all of the drives. So if you're not familiar with this process, it can take probably about 30 minutes if nothing major goes wrong, and it's just really challenging and takes a long time and a lot of manual input. But definitely, if you do this option, make sure you checkpoint your device inside of your hypervisor so you don't have to go back and redo all of your previous work and installation if, for example, you break something in your device. So you may be thinking after this that, okay, Let's say my host is x86 based, but I have an APK that only supports a particular version of ARM. Well, there's no option that I can use except buying a different computer that supports ARM. This is not the case. There is a workaround. So the workaround is you can actually use virtual machines hosted inside of the cloud platform of your choice. For example, if you wanted to use Azure or AWS, they have different ARM-based Linux VMs that are available for you that you can quickly create and destroy and perform your analysis on in between. First example, here is one inside of Azure. All you need to do is create the VM and you can follow this guide on how to do that. And you can create a custom script that will auto install all of the things that you need so that you can quickly perform your analysis and then delete the VM after you're finished. 
So what you're going to be doing if you're spinning up an ARM-based virtual machine inside of the cloud, you can actually quickly auto install Docker on the machine with your custom script that you're running on the VM during its setup and preparation. And then if you install Docker, all you need to do is run console commands to be able to spin up the emulator so you can perform your analysis. So I recommend performing your analysis as quickly as possible so you can delete the VM once you're done. So one nice thing to notice is that since you're going to be running a 64-bit updated new version of ARM in any of these cloud options, it's going to be nice and backwards compatible to probably all of the different Android emulators that you can choose either inside of any of the Docker containers or inside of the Android SDK. So another option would be doing this through AWS and they also have different ARM architectures available for you that come pre-installed with, for example, Ubuntu, if you want to perform your analysis on there. So the thing about these is if you perform your analysis and then you're finished, you can destroy the resource afterwards and then you're only paying for the amount of time that you're actually on the virtual machine. So the obvious con of these cloud-based options is that they do cost money. So you're going to want to minimize the amount of time that you're using these options. Try and go for the other options as much as you can if possible. But these are good if you have a scenario where you're needing some, for example, ARM support and your host only supports x86 and you need to quickly spin something up to do your analysis on to support that particular APK. For the final option, you might be thinking that this is going to be the best option, but there's actually some pros and cons that go along with it as well. So I'm talking about using a real Android device. So this is good because it's going to be the most accurate representation of an Android device because it's actually the real Android device. However, it's got some cons, particularly that you're limited to the actual target architecture of the Android emulator. So if you're, for example, if for example, you have an older device, it might not be able to run some of the APKs that are targeted towards newer hardware. Additionally, depending on your different device, you might not be able to take snapshots of the device in a clean state. So if you're doing malware analysis and you're regularly installing different kinds of malware, it's really useful to be able to continually revert back to a clean state if you're on the device. You don't want to infect malware after malware and start infecting your entire system and your other devices on your network and stuff. So this might be a challenge if you're using the real device. Those are all of the different options for Android emulators and real devices that you have when you're beginning your dynamic analysis process of Android APKs. So my common workflow is this. Normally, if I'm running on my host machine on my hardware, then I will just go ahead and use the Android SDK. I'll go in Android Studio, create a virtual device the first time, and then do everything else through the terminal, since having the whole of Android Studio is good for developers, but a little bit overkill for reverse engineers usually. And if I'm having to switch between system to system, then I will go ahead and use the Docker containers since I don't have to install a ton of different dependencies uh, on those systems. Additionally, if I'm needing to support a particular target architecture, for example, I'm running an x86 based machine. So when I have an APK that only supports ARM, I just spin up a VM in Azure real quick, have it pre-install Docker on there in a custom script, and then I do my analysis and destroy the VM once I'm done with it. So this is the most cost effective option. Finally, if I'm stuck running, for example, on a Windows VM, or I want to take a bunch of different snapshots of my Android emulator constantly, I just run the Android x86 option so that I can put that in a, inside of a hypervisor. Most of my time is spent using the Android SDK just because it's the most convenient. And then the second most amount of time I spend is inside of a cloud VM if I need to support an ARM architecture. So thanks for watching Lurie Wired everyone. Today we covered all of the different emulators that you can use for emulating Android devices. We also talked about the different instruction set architectures that Android supports and why you need to care about them in order for compatibility with your host machine.
Finally, we covered the different options including Docker, the Android x86 project, as well as the Android SDK inside of Android Studio, and finally we talked about using a real device. So thanks so much for watching the Rewired, everyone. And all the fears you hold so dear will turn to whisper in your ear.